Hey everyone, it's Lauren Smack here, real estate broker out of Mississauga in Toronto and founder of Real Estate Rookies. And I'm here to have another coaching mastermind session about marketing and branding. Hopefully this one will be a little more interactive. So current plan today, we're gonna to talk about marketing and branding. Um, and this is gonna be the rough agenda. We're gonna talk about sales and marketing and everything like that. Um, Hopefully be a little more interactive if you have questions. And at the end, Mastermind, you can pretty much ask me anything that you like. Um, so I will start. Let's see, there's a couple of stuff in the chat before I go. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully this gets everyone's week started. Now that March break is over, we're ready to go. <laughs> uh, I know I'm trying to get back to into the swing of things after uh, my first vacation after a while. Um, so let's start off with sales versus marketing. Um, out of curiosity, does anyone know what the difference is between sales and marketing? If anyone just wants to unpause and talk, if not, I'll just keep rambling on. Anyone? No, okay. So basically the difference between sales and marketing is sales is more like a direct one-on-one -on -one thing. So for example, you meet someone uh, at a coffee shop, you talk with them, you're trying to like sell them to use you one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. That's like the more direct approach. Marketing is more like an attraction approach. So for example, when you see billboards and you see uh, flyers and that kind of stuff, the, the general idea with marketing is that you want somebody to raise their hand and say, hey, uh, I'm interested in what you have to sell. And then you go and talk to them. So that's really the, the two differences between sales and marketing. There's usually a lot of arguments over which is better, sales or marketing or that kind of stuff. They're both important. Uh, and Basically, they're both important to get uh, to get customers. So I don't think one is any better than the other, although I think sales is a little bit more important for real estate at the beginning, at the very least. Um, but so the advantages with marketing, for instance, is that it's more exponential versus linear. So sales, you talk to one person, you talk to a second person, you talk to a third person. With marketing, it's very leverageable. So once you have your marketing plan, all you're doing is putting money into the money machine, and then it just goes and then you just get more and more clients. But it's harder to get that system set up. And so that's like the problem with marketing versus sales, especially when you're starting out. Uh, marketing is more about um, like positioning, branding and awareness, social proof, that kind of thing. So again, they're more like attracting kind of things that you're doing versus sales where you're just really trying to either convince them or tell them why you're the right person for the job. Sales and marketing. Uh, any questions about sales and market, sales versus marketing for clarification? All right. Okay, so I'll just move on then. So next one is the rookie mistakes I see a lot in marketing. So on the marketing end of it, there's, there's a few problems that I see, especially with rookies doing. Um, the first of which is I feel that a lot of rookies spend way too much time on marketing versus sales. And so this means you start off, and the thing you do is you start looking at your business cards and then your signs and then your logo and then your headshot and then your website. And then you just keep doing that kind of stuff. Uh, I think it's better to start on the sales end because you need to practice converting prospects. You need to practice speaking. You need to practice your scripts. You need to practice all that kind of stuff. I think it's more important because even though you can attract a lot of people through marketing, at the end of the day, at some point, you still need to convert them. Once you get good at converting them, then I think it's okay to start trying to attract them through marketing. But that's one of the problems I see. Uh, and the main problem with that is, is that with marketing, a lot of times, uh, I mean, social media is different, but a lot of times with marketing, it costs money. And especially when you're starting out, you don't have that much money. So although other people can spend tons of money on commercials and radio ads and billboards and flyers, that's a lot of money. Uh, for me, my, my mindset, in the first year at least, was pretty much to door knock, cold call, open houses, all of those are free. It just takes my time and, it, and it's more of a direct prospecting method so that I could keep practicing my pitch. Uh, I mean, even with my first listing that I got in my farm in Lorne Park in Mississauga, um, my mindset wasn't to get a listing. My mindset was just to start talking to people, door knocking and just practice speaking with them. And then next week when I go back, I just speak with them again. And, and the only purpose was just to keep speaking with them and practice talking better and talking like I know what I was doing. And even my first listing, which was in Lone Park, they had no idea that this was my first year because I just spoke with confidence and said, okay, sounds like you're the right guy. 
So that's what I have to say about marketing. Uh, other things, other rookie mistakes that I see is uh, people who are obsessed about perfection. So the quote is really progress over perfection. You're like stumbling forward. You're just like doing things. You don't try to, you don't necessarily have to get it perfect. I mean, I know a lot of people have that type of mindset. Yeah, you don't understand. We need a perfect. I have to have my best foot forward, that kind of thing. But like anything is better than nothing. I mean, obviously don't throw something that's like a five out of 10 over the fence, but like eight out of 10, nine out of 10, those are perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be a 99% out of a hundred kind of thing when you're doing your website or that kind of thing. So try to get like done is better than perfect. Like just get it out the door if you're doing the marketing end of it. I guess that's all I have to say about the rookie mistakes. Anyone have any questions about rookie mistakes in marketing? So really just, I, I do see a lot of rookies spending a lot of time here, like way too much time. Like you should be talking to people, even if it's just talking to your sphere, talking to your friends and family, talking to people in the coffee shop, like just practicing talking, it'll help you. Because, you know, the, like I keep saying, the, the main script you should do is everyone's gonna ask you, how's the market doing? And you really should have an answer for that. And I can't stress that enough because everyone's gonna ask you that. Even if they're not even, uh, interested in the actual market, when you're at a party, you're talking to your friends, whatever it is, they're going to ask you, hey, how's the market going? And I think the worst answer is just like, oh, yeah, the market's hot. Uh, that's it, right? Like, at least come up with some answer, whatever the answer is. So that would be my rookie mistakes in marketing. Next is planning a marketing campaign. So again, I'm going to quickly try to go through all these five points. And then if anyone has any questions about anything, you can ask me during the mastermind, or we can ask me during the route. So if I'm talking too fast, let me know. <laughs> okay, so planning a marketing campaign. This is what I do a lot, especially in my first year, but just throughout every year. This is all I keep doing. The general plan with a marketing campaign is you need to come up with an idea, allocate a budget, implement it, and figure out if it's worth it. So I've had tons of ideas in the past, and a lot of them I do implement, uh, and then I just see if it works, and if it doesn't work, I just move on. So I can go through some of my other marketing campaigns, but for example, let's just say you want to come up with an idea, like I want to flyer the neighborhood uh, because I want to do geographic farming. So I want to send out a whole bunch of postcards. So that would be like number one, come with an idea. Send out a bunch of postcards, great. Number two, allocate a budget. Uh, for that, I mean, different for every, Field, but you know you would allocate a budget whether it's ten thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, ten thousand dollars, whatever. Allocate a budget, and then you'd implement it. You would just start to actually do it. Start sending out postcards every week, every other week, whatever the plan is. And the most important part is number four: to figure out if it's worth it. Uh, I think that's pretty important because if it's not worth it, uh, you're just going to keep spending money. Now, a lot of people have a lot of. Um, disagreement here, I guess, over the spectrum of how long you should spend before you figure out it's not worth it. And that's an individual decision, I guess. A lot of people who do farming are like, no, you've got to do like three times a month for like three years minimum, and then keep going, keep going. Don't worry, it'll work. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. That's up to you. But again, that type of marketing campaign takes up a lot of money and a lot of time. And also, if you do that when you're starting out, you may not be able to convert any of the leads that come in. So really, you're wasting it. So for example, if you're doing online lead generation and you're paying 10 to $20 per lead and you're paying you know, $2,000 a month for hundred leads and you have no idea how to speak to them, you have no idea about your market, you have no idea how to do anything, I think it's a waste of money, it's up to you. Uh, so again, that's why things like open houses or even cold calling, door knocking, that type of prospecting method lets you practice for free versus paying $20 for the privilege of talking to somebody and maybe also messing up as well. So this is a general way that I would do planning a marketing campaign. Does anyone have any questions about that? Sorry, I'm just really motoring through all this because there's a lot to cover. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go through some of my marketing campaigns just to give you an idea. Let me see what I have. Uh, for instance, um, when I started out, I did open house draws. So I would, have a $50 Tim Hortons card, Starbucks card, that kind of stuff. I would print out uh, open house sheets that just said, hey, why don't you come into my open house so that you can come to the free draw. Then I would take 
the slips and I would door knock the neighborhood around my open house and pretty much invite everyone, why don't you come in the open house? And there's also a free draw for a $50 gift card. Uh, and then if they weren't home, then at least they got my slip, which invited them to my open house. And after they invited them to my open house, then I would do the actual draw. I would do a video about that. I would call everybody back. Um, and so that that's like a small marketing campaign that I did. After a while, I felt that, that didn't really work that well. Um, I felt that I was using the open house as uh, the open house draw as a crutch because I was afraid of rejection, which I still am, but that's okay. Um, so it is easier for me when I'm door knocking around an open house to invite them in for a free draw because it's very difficult for someone to tell you to screw off because you're like, hey, I'm just inviting you to an open house to a free job for $50. And like, oh, that sounds good. Like, you know, they're not gonna tell you get off my lawn, right? So that was like an easier way for rejection for myself, at least when starting out. Eventually I, I just decided, you know what? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I can just invite them to the open house. Like I don't need that as a crutch, but I did use that as a crutch at the beginning. So you, you might find that helpful. Um, another program, let me see what else I do. Uh, similarly, I did a free weekly draw. So I do have an email campaign that I send out every week to everyone that I know. Uh, I think my database is about 2000 or more than that now. So I send out an email campaign to everybody. And initially when I started, I actually did the same thing. I did like a weekly draw. I figured it shouldn't cost me that much, maybe about a hundred bucks for like the month. Um, sorry, it was a weekly invite to the people and it was like a monthly draw. So every month I would give away like a couple hundred dollars of prizes, gift cards, uh, free cakes, that kind of stuff. And then that was, again, my easy way of low rejection. So when I talked to people to subscribe to my newsletter, my main point was, why don't you subscribe to get the free draw, win some free prizes, that kind of stuff. So again, it was like a very low rejection type of method for me to get people into my database. Uh, after about a year, I felt that one didn't make any sense uh, for the same reason. I'm attracting the wrong kind of people. The people that I'm attracting are really the ones who are, you know, looking for deals and looking for free stuff. So when I stopped that, a whole bunch of people unsubscribed and that's fine. They're not really my target market, so I don't really care, but it's just an attempt to try different things. Uh, another thing I tried was the VIP program uh, that was advertised at one of the realtor uh, seminars where they gave a VIP card. Actually, let me see if I have one. Yeah, sorry, I don't have one. Used to have them there, but I basically filed them all away. It's like a small card that looks pretty professional. And the card had a bunch of benefits on it. Uh, I think they cost like about 50 bucks a month, somewhere around there. And so all of my sphere can take the card and get discounts on this store, that store. And similarly, I could approach small businesses and say, can you, do you want to be part of my VIP program? Uh, and then we can offer discounts from your store to other people. So, I mean, I did get some business out of that, but uh, I felt again, that wasn't really part of my branding and my messaging. Um, so I stopped that one after about a year. Most of the times in my mind, I basically try things for about a year or six months or something like that and see if it goes well. Uh, other marketing, I mean, so I just try a lot of stuff. Uh, another marketing thing I'm trying now is uh, weekly emails, which I mentioned before, that's based on Ricky Caruth's method, where he emails people something of value once a week for ever. I think he's done it for like 10 years or something. I've done it for more than a year. I think it's a good way to keep in touch with clients. Uh, it's a lot to commit to, but that's really my main method of getting out to people in terms of marketing and social media, of course. But that is my main method uh, in terms of communicating with everybody that I know. And a few of them will unsubscribe, but you know, at the end of the day, it gets out to like 2000 people or something, at least now. And so occasionally someone will raise their hand and then just email me and say, hey, I'm looking to buy or sell a house. So that is the method of more marketing. So if you wanna go more the sales method, which I don't really like, which is the classic call your clients or your sphere, once every quarter. Uh, I don't do that just for your information. No matter how much the coaches and managers keep yelling at me, I do not do that. I do not like doing that. That is not my thing. But 
maybe it's your thing, but that is more like the direct sales method where you're talking to them, you're trying to sell them, you're trying to get an idea and trying to get a lead that way versus marketing where you want someone to just put their hand up and say, hey, I need some help. Pros and cons. I think the sales method actually is a more higher conversion method, but marketing method is more leverageable. And again, cost more money. Uh, I think I pay like about $50 a month for the uh, mass mailer at Send in Blue. But there, there's a lot of other programs like MailChimp and that kind of stuff. Uh, anyone have any uh, marketing campaigns that maybe you've tried or maybe you have any questions about since we're here on this topic? No? Quiet group, that's okay. We'll move on. Okay, social media. So I didn't want to talk too much about social media here. Um, but if you have, if you're my friend on Facebook, you'll see roughly what I post. And if you're not, I suggest you just connect with me on Facebook or Instagram and just see what type of stuff I post. Although Instagram, I'm not too big on, but, uh, with social media, it's, it's the same idea. It is free marketing and it does take time, but that is more of marketing marketing. Unless you're actually DMing people, it's more like building a story, getting people a feeling about who you are and what you do. And then when they're ready, they sort of raise their hand and then they talk to you. So social media is very good for that, but it does take time to curate, uh, like to make it very, very good so that people can believe in you. And I guess the specifics of whether it's Facebook, Instagram, that kind of stuff, I guess we can talk about in another time because that particular topic takes a while. But if you take a look at both my emails, which you could subscribe to, or my social media, I only have one goal. And my main goal is do not unsubscribe from me. That is my only goal. So if I was like some realtors who just keep posting, just sold, just listed, open houses, I'm this good, I got this award. It's very boring. Everyone's gonna unsubscribe. No one's gonna stick around. Once they unsubscribe, I can no longer sell to them because this is my main method of communicating with them. So my main goal, if you look at my Facebook is very lighthearted, trying hard not to do anything political, nothing religious, you know, just jokes here and there, occasionally sprinkling some real estate, occasionally sprinkling some information like that. With my email, same thing. I always try to provide something of value. It's very rare. It's just like, hey, look at me, look at my award, look at what I sold. Uh, that comes later on in the section in my emails that I send out, maybe at the bottom. I'm like, oh, this is a testimonial. But the main article that I put is usually about the interest rates are changing, or this is what it takes to invest as a corporation. And this is what you should do. And this is where I interviewed this other person about, you know, inspections or Kitech plumbing. These are all important things so that when a prospect gets it in their email inbox, they're not likely to unsubscribe from me. They might, but if they do, they're probably not my client. Like they probably have their own realtor. They're just like, look, stop sending me stuff. You know, either they're going to say, Hey, I'll call you when I'm ready. And that has happened. I've had friends that are not on my email list. And they basically told me, look, I don't need more spam in my inbox, but I will call you when I'm ready. And they do. And that's okay. But then there's a whole bunch of other people who um, appreciate all the information. And the general idea with Ricky Cruz's weekly email is that they're not ready now because they're not thinking about buying and selling now. Four years from now, all they do is see my email once a week, every week for like four years. And like, okay, this guy's pretty solid. Uh, he's probably good at real estate. He's probably been doing this a long time. Maybe I should use this guy. And, and that's the general idea. Recently, I've gotten the opportunity for a listing presentation for a prospect who I've never met in person. I met them on a sign call, and even then they, they canceled the sign call. So I never actually met them in person. But after that point, I put them in my emailing list. And then, you know, two years later, he called up and said, thinking about selling my house. What do you think? Came in there, did my pitch. Didn't get it. It was close, but I could have gotten it. And the only reason why I'm still talking to him is because of my email that, cause he's not on my social media either. So the email that comes out once a week, uh, you know, eventually I guess he saw it, thought I was, I knew what I was doing and then called me up. But that relationship wouldn't have happened without the email. So if you take away that whole email campaign, there's no way he would call me. Like, why would he call me? He, he did a sign call with me two years ago because he wanted to see a property. He didn't see the property. Like, why would he remember me? It'd be zero reason. The alternative would have been if I called him, you know, once a quarter, once a year, that kind of stuff, and just say, hey, can I help you? That would work as well, but I didn't. 
So I'm just saying without the email. Have you ever asked for feedback? I mean, you're going with other person. Yes. But... Every time I do. Yeah. Okay. Every time I do. Um, most of the time I don't get it, but <laughs> every time I definitely ask for feedback. Um, so the problem with feedback is it's not true. It's kind of like if you know you're breaking up with somebody and it's like it's, it's not you, it's me kind of thing. Um, it's hard to get real feedback. Occasionally, I've gotten real feedback, maybe, but it's hard for them to say, you know, we went with the other person because they had cheaper commission, even though I have gotten that before. And the only reason why I think I got that was because it was a very good friend's uncle. And so when I, after like my whole pitch and that kind of stuff, and after the referral, uh, they went in another direction. I asked, why is it that I lost this one? And I think the uncle felt bad and they sort of had to explain themselves because it would be weird, right? Like, it's like you get like a really solid referral from your niece or something, uh, but a great realtor and all of a sudden you don't use the person. And so you need to explain. And that particular one, they said, your marketing was very similar. Your, you know, your experience was very similar. Uh, and also the commission was down. <laughs> That's basically, they gave three points. The first one was like, you know, your, your butt is good. You know, their marketing was slightly better. Uh, experience, you know, you guys are very comfortable. Their experience was slightly better. And point number three, and also they had a lower commission. So I basically ignored the first two and I'm pretty sure the answer was they have a lower commission. So that's why I don't really ask that much. Uh, would from you, personal, I'm sorry, what's that? Uh, would you suggest like uh, turning the wheels towards you by, I mean, questioning back in a, in a positive way, obviously, or not like um, when they're giving you feedback and try to still turn wheels towards you in a way that like, uh, I'm, I'm a new agent, by the way. So I, I, I was just thinking of how one can even, while you're getting a feedback, still leaving that question in their head that, you might be a good choice, but they're leaving you right now. Uh, is it? A, I mean, just kind of leaving them in a dilemma. So, <laughs> so I, I mean, so so there's like a couple of schools of thought here. Right? The first first school of thought is like if it's not a done deal, maybe you still have a chance. But if if you're pretty sure, or it's not, it's already a done deal, as in they already signed the other person, that kind of stuff. Your only chance now is to get the future deal, not the current one, right? So. Yeah, but- you're Being, still leaving the seed there, right? That's what I was thinking. I'm sorry, what was that? You're still putting the seed in their head, like they might come back later on. Yeah, as you yeah. Said. yeah. I mean, I do that too. I just say, you know, I hope you get the price of, and I, and I put in like an overpriced price uh, that you wanted. We'll see what you get, right? And yeah. they obviously didn't get that. I mean, I did that with another one because I was actually pretty sure they weren't coming back. So I said, you know, you didn't use me. You went with the guy with the lower commission. I know that because I had a lower co-op and I know that they had a lower commission. And I'm like, uh, just so you know, the other unit that was upstairs a week later sold for $10,000 more. So I hope you got what you liked. And then the answer is from me, you know. But like, I mean, I don't care about them. They don't even live in like Ontario. It doesn't matter. But, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm like, you know, I mean, if you're going to waste my time with that stuff, like, it's fine. I'll just do that. I mean, maybe they'll come back, who knows? Uh, but the fact that they unsubscribe from my email, most likely they're not going to come back. So I just had to make sure a week later when the other one sold that they knew, because I don't think the realtor told them. So I just want to make sure that they knew that they didn't get as high of a price. So, you know, have a good life, whatever. <laughs> Thank you. So, but, you know, you can't always keep everyone because you have to understand that well, I was a tech mastermind, but like you have to understand that the um, well, I guess we'll go to the mastermind time now and talk about anything. Not all of your clients or prospects are the ones who want to pay for value. There is a certain subset of people, and you probably know them, you know, whether it's 10, 20, 30 percent, whatever it is, that only care about the least amount of money, they don't care about value, and that's okay. You know, the ones that are say, I want the least commission, and I'm like. You're going to get more money at the end of the day. I do a better job, blah, blah, blah. And like, I don't care. I want the lowest commission. I want to pay the lowest co-op. I just want the lowest commission. And you're like, okay, no problem. So then you do whatever you can and you see if you can get that deal. But real estate isn't a transactional thing. Although you might need the money now, real estate is about the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of your life. That's what real estate is. If you're going to deal with somebody who only wants the cheapest price is a win-lose situation. Like they don't care win-win. Like I want the cheapest price. I don't care who gets it. You know, I just want to make the most money in my pocket and screw everybody else. 
that mindset of somebody is not going to refer you. That mindset of person is going to do the same thing on the next deal. The mindset of that person, if they do refer their brother or their friend, they're going to want some type of bird back, uh, some bird dog fee kickback. They're going to want some money back. They're going to want something, right? Like, like that's the mindset of the person who does that. So when you understand that, the question is, do you want this or do you want a hundred of these in your database that you're continuously chasing after where they're continuously going after the lowest commission rate? My feeling from my business is no, because I don't think it's worth it over the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Now, if you, if you really need the money now and you're really going to do whatever it is and spend whatever money and just try to get a deal, that's fine. But when you're trying to plan like long term, right, what is it the type of clients that you want long term? It's not these type of clients. And so when they keep asking you about this and then now they want like another commission break, you know, I'm closing and how much you're going to take off of this. And, you know, and then what type of closing gift? Like I want like a big closing, gift, you know, that type of mindset, you know, that that isn't a great fit. You know, same thing if your friends are like that and you're not like i mean if you're like that and your friends are like that it's fine you know you're going out everyone's trying to calculate you know what their share is times seven percent tip or whatever like okay great everyone bring up the calculators if that's what you like to do no problem right but if that's not you and all your friends are like that then it's a hard mix especially if you're going to deal with those particular friends for the next 10 20 30 40 50 years so same thing with your um, your potential prospects and your clients, right? You want to deal with people that hopefully you like because you're going to try to deal with them again. You want the referral business. The referral business is where you get the money, the long-term business. If, you, if you're dealing with a family and you're new, right? So they, they just bought like a first time buy house kind of thing. It's a first time house. They're young professionals. You know, over the lifetime, they're going to upgrade like two or three times. Eventually, they're going to have kids. Their kids are going to buy things. They have other professional friends. I mean, there are so many transactions out of this one person that you want to make sure that you want to deal with one person in a good way and that that person is a good type of person you want to deal with. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, what is the question here? Catherine, what answer do you usually give for how is the market in this market? Also, I've read a lot about value proposition. I see a lot of people using your home still guarantee. Does everyone have another one that's working well? Okay, so let's dissect that slowly. So we'll start with the home sold guarantee. So the home sold guarantee works. It's not my style, but it works. And um, the general idea, and this is very general, I'm not really, I'm not really talking against any particular realtor, 